to give y'all something to pray for real quick.
Hi, Miss Lewis. Hi, Latanya. Who's in here? Hi, Brittany. Hi, Marquisha. Marquisha, happy Friday. Hi, Jamia. Hi, Sharonda. Hi, Deidre. Hello. Thank you, guys. Rashida, Bobby, Adriana H. I'm a woman at the well, resurrection warrior. Yes, J Slade. Yes, Crystal Brook, Nia, Sister Shante, Ryan. Yes. Hello, Moses, Ocean. Hello, Tina. Welcome, Star. He's hi, James. For you to be glorified, for you to be lifted high, high. Hi, Lauren. Welcome, Lauren. Hi. Hello, Bethany. Sometimes you got to cancel out that stress. Sometimes you got to cancel out that stress. You got to cancel out that pain. You got to cancel out that fear. You got to declare and declare that I am healed, that I am well, that I am happy, that I am good, that I'm fruitful, that I walk in abundance. I silence you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Glory be the God of your presence, Lord. Have your way, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We cancel out anything, any thoughts, any feelings, the emotions, any anxiety, any stress. That's not of you, and we send it back to the pits of hell. Father God, but you can have your way in here. You can have your way in our hearts, Lord God. Now somebody just take a couple seconds and lift the name of Jesus. Come on. We lift Messiah, Jesus the Christ, hope, the risen one. Welcome, family. Before we get started, I want, um, um, before we get started, I received, I received a mighty, mighty breakthrough today. 
And it would be so selfish of me to get this breakthrough and not share with you guys. So before we even get started in the Word, I want to get you guys this breakthrough. So let me pray first. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much for this time, this opportunity, this life with my brothers and my sisters. Lord God, I just thank you for showing up. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your availability. Bind, I just bind the spirit of stress and aggravation and depression and overwhelm and it's hypertension and anxiety now. Father God, but I ask the peace that surpasses all understanding just come upon us right now, Lord God, Father God. Take over this moment, saturate yourself, your presence in this moment, Lord God, that none of us leave the same in Jesus' name, Lord God. I thank you for the deliverance, the uprooting, Father God, the tearing down, the breakthroughs that's going to occur right now in this moment, in this time, Lord God. Have your way. Forgive us of our sins, known and unknown. But come against any wickedness, any darkness, Father God, any antichrist spirits, any delusional spirit, Father God, any monitoring spirits, any witches, any warlocks, anything that's not of you, we cast and we break it in the name of Jesus. And we come in agreement with your word. We come in agreement with what thus says the Lord over our life, Father God, as our Lord and Savior. We thank you, Lord. Have your way. Amen. Can everybody say amen? Can everybody like the video? All right. So the first thing I want to do before we even get into this slide where I start to give you guys the word is I want you to um, know something about you. Maybe this is not for everyone. <sighs> Somebody already receiving a breakthrough, right? I want you to know, I want you to know that so many years of people accusing you and blaming you for things Blaming you for what's broken. Blaming you for you being single. Blaming you for not having enough. Blaming you for their problems. Blaming you for why the reason they're not successful. Blaming you saying you could have been a better mother, a better friend, a better this, a better that. There has been a blame, 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 right? To the point that people do stuff to you. You should have cleaned it up. You should have took care of it. You should have did that. And they're blaming you and you've taken on this role like, oh, it is my fault. And you find yourself blaming yourself for every single thing. Blaming yourself for every single thing. Being blamed for every single thing. Allowing someone and other people to... I bind you, Satan. I, I rebuke you now in the name of Jesus. Father God, captivate my mind right now. Any spirits, any entities that surround me that's not of you, I bind them. But literally blaming you for everything, blaming you for their problems, blaming you for their ups and downs, just blaming you for everything. And you, you're like walking around with this complex. You're like thinking that you're, you're always wrong. Is this helping anyone? Yeah, I know this is for somebody. You always think like something wrong with me. I, I should have said that differently or I should have did that differently. I see a lot of people do that with me. They've been around pastors that hurt them and people that hurt them and spiritual leaders that hurt them. So when they come around me, they think that, you know, she, she's not going to think I'm good enough. She, I can't set up a one-on-one -on -one with her because I, I, don't wanna, I don't want her to think this. I don't want her to think that about me. You, you have this complex that you think everyone is going to blame you. But God says it ends today. Someone says it ends today. Always thinking that it's me, it's me. Oh, I was the black sheep in the family. I could have did something better. Oh, I could have did that differently. You know, you're in a relationship. Oh, yeah, you know, hold me. You know, this man has taken no accountability for any of the things that he did. He's putting every single thing on you. And you're walking around with this. Oh, I could have did better. Okay, yeah, I'll do that at work. Your boss throwing more and more work on you. And you're walking around like, oh, I could have finished the job. I could have did better. Satan is an accuser of the brethren brethren just cost even if it's something that you did mess up for yourself the constant abuse and the constant unworthiness and allowing people to blame you for everything ends now thank you jesus ends now ends now ends now ends now ends now you did this you did that mom you could have did that that it's just constant oh god i feel a freedom today I just released a word right before I went live, so you guys probably haven't seen it yet. But after you 
watch this live. Go watch the word that I posted today on Jezebel. But we say that it ends now, Father God, and we know that you're not going to... You're going to break off every curse. You're going to break off everything. You're going to release us, Father God, from the stress of having to be perfect, the stress of having to get everything right, the stress of wanting to say and do everything right. You release us now in the name of Jesus. Haley said, I just got done watching the word really good in confirmation. Happy to hear that, Haley. There's this... You know, am I helping anyone? You and your friend fall out and she blaming you. Everybody blaming you and you like, okay, I'll take accountability for my part, but y'all act like y'all don't do nothing wrong. And we walk around with this complex thinking that we're not good enough, that we have to have the right words, that we have to say the right words, that we have to do the right things, that we have to do this and be this. Somebody said, it can't be all me. Somebody say, do you do everything right? Because I don't. But all of our lives, your marriage, your relationship, your friendship, it's just like, goodness, I can't do, can I do anything right? Tiffany V said, this is very helpful. Helpful. It, Latanya said, it can't, it can't be all me. There, there has to be some accountability. I was watching a show the day before yesterday and the man was like, you know, women need to be more careful who they're dating. They're having babies by men and then blaming the men when they knew that man wasn't any good. And this other man spoke up and said, no, both parties have to take accountability. Both parties have to take accountability of what they did and what they could have done differently. Somebody said, it takes two to tangle. But we have been pushed around, lied on long enough. We have been bullied into doing things that we wasn't even supposed to do, but we feel so guilty all the time. Father God, I cancel guilt right now in the name of Jesus. I cancel guilt right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. I can't I cancel guilt right now, Lord. I cancel guilt, Lord God. I cancel guilt. I will not. I will not. I will not. I will not accept guilt. I will not accept you telling me I could have did better. I couldn't have been. I can't. Somebody say I can't carry it all anymore. Somebody's can't, I cannot cancel it. I cannot anymore. Somebody say, I can't. No, I won't. I can't. So I wanted to bring deliverance to somebody today. I wanted to bring you deliverance right now in Jesus' name. I wanted to bring you deliverance right now in Jesus' name. Somebody's time, say, Father God, I just cancel out guilt. Father God, when we play the blame game, where we beat ourselves up and we were hard on ourselves in the name of Jesus, when our anxiety was high, Lord God, our anxiety was through the roof, Lord God. Our anxiety was, was, was following us around everywhere. And we were trying to figure out how we could fix this person problem because they blamed us and how we could fix that person problem because they blame us. But the blame game stops today, Lord God. I will not walk around with this complex. I would not walk around with this heaviness on me, thinking I got to fix everything, thinking I got to run this company for them, thinking that I got to take care of everything. I will not. Your children need to take accountability in their household. Father God, let the people around us take accountability for the things that they're doing and the things that they could have did differently, Lord God. Let the people around us learn to, to accommodate us and consider us. And I declare, and I declare, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that people will have to uh, consider us and our feelings and our emotions, that our emotions won't be ran over no more. 
people just run over your emotions and don't care about your emotions and don't even ask you how you're doing today. Don't even ask you how you're feeling today. No one, no one's asking you how you doing today. Do you need anything? Can I help you? No one's asking you that. Does somebody say no more to the blame game? Somebody say stop blaming me. Don't blame me for nothing else. Anybody feel free right now? They blame you for everything and you walking around thinking something wrong with you walking around with this complex. Did anybody get set free? Do anybody feel like it broke off of them? Now in the name of Jesus, cancel. No more blame game. No more, no more, no more complex. I'm breaking in the name of Jesus. Breaking, 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 breaking. Now I will not be blamed, Lord God, for everything. They blame me for everything. They blame it on my attitude. They blame it on my demeanor. They blame it on because I didn't show up. They blame me for everything. No more. Somebody say the blame game is over. No more in the name of me. I will not be blamed for every single thing that doesn't go right in this family. I won't be blamed for me and my father not having a relationship. I won't be blamed for me and my mother not having a relationship. I won't be blamed for that relationship not working out. I will not be blamed for other people's problems and other people's stuff. I will not be blamed when, when this relationship is a two-sided street. This can you come your way, you meet me halfway. Somebody say, meet me halfway. I will not be blamed for every single thing. Somebody say, I can't. I can't do it all. I can't be blamed for everything that don't work out the way that we wanted it to. Somebody say, I will not and I cannot. I will not be blamed anymore. No more blame game. They blame Jesus for everything. Oh, blasphemy. He want them to call him the Messiah. He causing trouble. He doing this. He doing that. They wanted Jesus to be blamed for everything. Somebody's saying, I can't no more. Right, Brittany Williams? Come on. Come on. No more. Somebody say no more blame games. Did that word bless anyone? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father God, for releasing us, Father God, from the accusations, Father God, from being accused all the time, for believing that we're a problem child, believing that we're a problem everywhere we go, believing that we don't fit in, believing that we're going to do something wrong, we're going to say something wrong, Father God. We will not be silent. We will not be silent every time we speak up for ourselves. We will not be blamed every time we speak up for ourselves. We will not be held back anymore. We cancel out any forces, any curses, anything, Father God, that will come against us to try to silence us and make us feel like we're not good enough. That will blame us, Father God, for things that don't even belong to us. All injustice stop now. I will not be blamed anymore. The truth has set me free. Yes. Set us free, Jesus. Set us free. Amen. Anybody feel free? Yes. Yes. I felt like I just had to get that off of us right now before we go any further. The blaming has to stop. It has to stop. I shared a short word today um, about Jezebel, and I want you guys to watch it when you get off of here. Um, but I have so much more to say today. I have a lot to say, and I'm gonna say it within 45 minutes, so just buckle up, sit down. Don't worry, I'll be doing all the talking. I'll be doing all the work. All you gotta do is say amen, okay? You like the video, that's all you gotta do. I'll do the rest. There's so many relationships that could have been rekindled. So many relationships that could have been saved. So many relationships that still can be saved right now. If the person that knows darn well that they are wrong would just say sorry. If that baby father would just take care of his children. If that best friend that you were best friends with for 15 years would just stop it and admit her side and take some accountability for what she could have did better. If only they can admit that they underpaid you. If only they can pay you. 
If only they can do right by you. If only they can admit that it was jealousy that caused a separation. If they can only admit that it was their insecurities that had them all over the place. I was insecure, baby. I started that argument with you because I was insecure. If only they can say, I messed up and I'm sorry. But instead of being saying I'm sorry and taking some accountability and doing right, you rather drag your pride to the ground. You rather sit up here and just try to play innocent and blame me for every single thing and make me fearful into thinking that I'm a problem and I'm always going to be a problem. Sting my back. I'm the problem and, and, and you're the problem and you could have did so much different and you overreacting and you need to reach out to him. Thank you, Tarika, for that scene. Yes, divine blessing for you, Tyra. Believe in that for you, sister. And you want me to believe that, you know, I did something wrong to, to soothe you, to make you feel better. If I just admit, why is my back? If I if I'll just say I was wrong, it'll make you feel so much better in your sin. It'll make you feel so much better about what you're doing. It'll make you feel so good. Whatever. Whatever. No. No, 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 no. No, 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 and no. I'm going to be in my prayer closet praying on this thing. But outside of that prayer closet, I know God is telling you to do right. And I know God is talking to you. And I know your conviction is talking to you. Because if he convicted me, I know he convicting you. And I know you know how to use your mouth and open your mouth. But you rather sit up there and allow Satan to use you and tear your life up. Your life is toe up from the flow up. Can I be a real pastor right now? Can I please take off my, my three-piece suit and throw on some ripped up jeans and a tank top right now and tell y'all the truth? That person life is toe up from the flow up. My grandma say from the floor up. Instead of floor, she says flow up. Toe up from the flow up, from the flow and up, from top to bottom. Somebody say, talk to me nice. Okay, sitting up there. Let me, Jamia, can I have a minute? Can I please, Adriana, can I just be real for a second? Because I'm not worried about the religious smoke for two minutes. That ain't got none out of common sense in their head and still think that wearing earrings is a sin. Girl, sit down. You... You so lost and, and you so far behind, I don't even know what to say to you. Can I talk to the real ones? Please, can I have a second with some real people? Can I have a minute? Y'all big old fake old phony Christians. I'm so tired of these big old fake phony facade wearing lying. I love Jesus cross wearing. I love Jesus t-shirt wearing a hoodie. I love Jesus with crosses, hoodie, lying cells. I'm so tired of y'all fake old Bible pushing judgmental cells. I am so tired of people being burdened down and beat down by people playing the blame game on them. And you not a good enough Christian. And you won't walk like this and talk like this. So you not a Christian. Shut up. You ain't doing the kingdom of God. Nan, not a benefit. Shut up. Shut up. Can I talk to some real folks right now? Every five minutes, you rebuking somebody because you a big old fat hater. You rebuking that girl because she look better in that dress than you. Just say it because she look better than your wife. Just say it and shut up because your ministry ain't doing good when you hating on everybody else since that is. You mad because they won't call you for no one-on-one -on -one call and mad because we be kiki and the kaka and around here all day and we winning. Just say it. Somebody say, just call it what it is. You at your job, you just want to look at that person and say, you mad because you've been working at this company for 30 years and all they gave you was a watch. And you mad because I'm young and still got, don't play with me. Don't even do it. 
We are not about to sit up here and pretend like you ain't walking around here looking at me wishing you was me because you decided to sit on your butt half of your life. And I'm still trying to give you the opportunity because God will give you an accelerated blessing and God will return to you the years that the locusts have given, have restored you the years the locusts have eaten. But you rather sit up there and hate on every pretty little girl that walk in this church. Shut up. Jezebel. Jezebel. Bell, you rather sit up and hide behind that desk and hide behind that computer screen than start the ministry, than start the nonprofit, than write the book. Can you want me to sit up here and feel insecure because I decided to step out on my passion and decided that I am going to go save lives and help the people and you want to sit up here and call me every name, the name you know exactly what I am. Honey, you are a secret admirer. Please, somebody say, it's Friday, not today. I ain't put on my church hat nor my church gloves today. So religious folks, y'all just got to wait a minute. Because I am so tired of seeing the people of God drugged down and boggled down because of these religious folks that hate themselves. These people that hate themselves. You hate yourself, so I hate you. Of course, you're going to hate me. Not today. And if it ain't the religious folks hating on you, it's the witches and the warlocks of the world. And your job hating on you every time you get a new car. Every time you get a promotion, they hating on you. Sending nasty emails. CCing, BBCing, kicking, all this stuff. Right in your face. Hating Jezebels. Let Jezebel just use them up. Even her daughter, Athaliah, all y'all, just all of it. And you're so mad because we see you. You're so mad because prophetic diaries see you. We see you. And you mad. And every time we say something and expose your butt, you get upset. And you get tired. And we ain't this and we ain't that. And you want to log off. And I'm just done with YouTube. I'm done with YouTube. You only done with YouTube when you get a word that you don't like. Goodbye. You ain't been done with that. You ain't been done with that man that's dragging you through the mud for the last 10 years. But you done with YouTube. Every time they give you a word you don't want to hear. Sit down somewhere. <laughs> No, I'm so tired of people. Look, the breath. Chill, relax, be quiet. It ain't that serious. Why you gotta go in here? Why you doing it? I'm stop trying to silence me every time. Sometimes, by time somebody get uncomfortable, relax. It don't take all that. When you gonna do all that? When you gonna be so aggressive? When you gonna say it like that? When, when, when? Enough, enough. Somebody say in 2024, the truth is the truth and don't get mad because our father God have given us eyes of discernment don't get mad because I can see right through your butt and you want me to stop somebody say I'm applying pressure all 2024 I'm applying pressure if it's a duck I'm gonna call it a duck I'm not gonna sit up here and tell you oh no you're a beautiful dove or your ego you are a duck and you need to learn how to fly you need to stop doing this you need to stop doing that you need to stop making excuses and it's or or either stop hating on people that don't I ain't even opened the word yet. I'm giving you a whole bunch of word right now. I came for the people that have been being blamed. I come for the people that have been being condemned and put down. Every time you give an innovative idea to the church, they saying that ain't good enough. That ain't good enough. All we do is honor the prophet. I, I'm just, you, can, you can't come up. You can't. No, we all as a body have our roles that we going to play. Everybody going to play their part. <laughs> They mad. Somebody say, ooh, we, they mad. No, because you want us to sit up here and act like we don't see through your lies and you get mad at everybody that see through you. You get mad at everybody that's seen through your phony, old, fake, old lies. You're living a lie. You're acting like your marriage is perfect. You're acting like your ministry is perfect. You're acting like your children are perfect. You're acting like your life is perfect. You're acting like every single thing is perfect. And we sit up here like that is not true. And you are not about to sell us no lies. No. You're not going to pop up and tell us that you were gone because God took you on a sabbatical. I'm so tired of these people. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I was gone for six months because the Lord had me on a sabbatical. And sometimes you just got to. 
you know, go away for 12 months and not let the children of God see you and the people your sheep. You supposed to be a shepherd and your sheep running around like crazy. How are you going on a sabbatical? Tell about God called you to YouTube, but you going on a sabbatical for six or seven months. Where's your sheep when you gone? Sit down. I'm tired. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. I'm over here working. God giving me words every 20 minutes for the sheep. Doing this, doing that. This is my calling. This is my lot in life. And you talking about you taking a nine-month sabbatical and your sheep. Girl, just send the sheep over here. Ain't got nan shepherd. Shepherd just gone. Shepherd just gone because they man ain't called him back. Goodbye. I ain't got time. I am not the one. This ain't nan not a prophet you ever seen in your life. I didn't ask to be a prophet. He made me a prophet. Okay. I didn't go to school for, to be a prophet. If they did have a school that can make you a prophet, which they don't. Can't nobody make you no prophet. That's a lie. Sign up for this class. I'll make you a prophet. You making, you doing that now? Okay. 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 Hey, whatever y'all say, whatever y'all say. Cause, cause if that's the case, can I take it back? Can I get a refund for this? Since you gave it to me, can I get a refund? I don't want to be it no more. What are, what are we doing? <laughs> okay. Yes. See, and see, people are already giving me advice about oh, but people got to draw back and they got to. Let me tell you something. If you're not over here doing this, don't talk. Don't give me nan not advice if you ain't doing it. Don't tell me, oh, well, you got to, don't give me nan not advice about how to do this if you're not doing it. I didn't ask for nobody's advice. <laughs> please, please. I ain't ask, look, I ain't ask for nan not a no, okay? <laughs> Somebody say pause. I, no, that's not true. I, I, I get my alone time with God. God know how to pull me in a secret place without pulling me away from the sheep. Thank God. Jesus knew when to pull away. Jesus, God called Jesus away. God called Jesus away to do what he had to do when he had to do. He called him on a fast. He called him to do all that stuff. But the, the, the sheep was taken care of though. And even when Jesus left, he left behind the Holy Spirit. Don't play with me. I'm not the one. Don't come for me. Even when he did leave, Jesus left, he left behind the Holy Spirit. Come on. Come on. No, I, no. They want me to shut up today, and I'm not. And I am not. That's the problem. We letting everybody tell us to be quiet. We letting everybody tell us, no, that's too much. That's too aggressive. That's too nice. And we're silencing ourselves. No. And we're not. Look, your, somebody said your arrogance is going to lead you to the gates of hell. I see you there. You see? Y'all, sometimes don't retry, don't delete the person too quick. Sometimes let them sit there because I got a word for them. Arrogance. See? They put every... They, as soon as you speak out, as soon as you say something, they say you arrogant. You, you, you get what I'm saying? Every time you speak out, every time you say something, every time you stand up for yourself, every time... Every time they say you arrogant, they say you this, your arrogance is going to lead you to the gates of hell. And she said, she said, your arrogance, she just said, your arrogance is going to lead you. I wish you would have let her stay on here a little longer. Y'all start letting these people stay on here a little longer. Don't delete them so quick. She said, your arrogance is going to lead you to the gates of hell. And I see you there. If that's not the most religious, do y'all understand? These people are living in the world and they're condemning you. She said, and I see you there. The only way you can see me at the gates of hell is if you there. Somebody said, what you doing at the gates of hell? Do y'all see? We're living amongst these religious people that want you to shut up because they don't want the truth. Right? But as soon as you speak up for yourself, as, as soon as you say something, the first thing they say is you're arrogant. Right? You're doing too much. You're too loud, you're too mean, you're too aggressive, you're too irritating every little demon in them. 
No, what I am is, Tweety, is I'm irritating them demons that's within you. Arrogance. I didn't brag one time. Arrogance, because I know who I am in Christ. Arrogance, because what? Because I'm not afraid to say to you what people been wanting to say to you for 15 years and ain't got the guts to say it. Prophets come to tear down and uproot. What are we talking about? You call that arrogance? No. If I see a demon, I'm going to call it out. That's what it is. If you make you feel uncomfortable. Yes, but, but I, I'm glad she said that. Because it's showing you, these religious folks are, are in the world. If you're saying what they like, you good. But the minute you say something they don't like, you're being arrogant. You're being disobedient. Who are you talking to? As soon as you say to your boss, I don't like that, who are you talking to? I own you. You're my slave. You don't talk to me like that. I own you. No, you don't. Nobody owns me. I'm a slave to no man. I'm this seal on my head is from my father. I am marked from the man above. He marked me. There's a mark on me from him. Not you. You don't own me. I'm not owned by anyone. But if they can't put that whip on your back, if they can't tie you up, if they can't get you to shut up, if they, you, they can't get you to do what you want to do, you want them to do, oh, you a nuisance. Oh, you're, oh, you're, oh, no. She got to go. She, she got to go. She spoke up for herself. She stood up for herself. Oh, get her out of here. No, Daniela, that's not the point. They're not messing with my peace. And that's another thing they say. Oh, you're bothered. I, when I make a point or I express myself, people think even when you express yourself, oh, they're messing with you. And I'm not picking on you, Daniela. I'm just saying, they say, oh, they're, don't let them steal your peace. We even got subject to saying that. I'm, my, I'm good. I'm, I'm just making a point. Well, why are you so bothered? I'm not bothered. I'm just making a point. Every time you make a point, I, I, honestly, no one did anything to me today. I'm honestly giving this word to y'all. I'm not bothered by anything. I actually had a great morning. But I'm trying to tell the people, every time you say something, they think you're bothered. They think you're upset. They think you're aggressive. They think you're attacking them. You think, And you're like, no, I'm just saying I don't want any creamer in my coffee. That's all I was saying. All I was saying is don't talk to me like that. All I was saying is that I don't agree with that. Why are you so bothered? Are you sleepy? No, I'm not sleepy. There's nothing wrong with me. Are you hungry? No, I'm not. I'm just saying, no, I'm just saying you can't have other, other women. Oh, you tripping. No, I'm not tripping. Why does there always got to be something when I say something? <laughs> Every time you say something, they say, well, what you so mad about? I'm not mad. I'm just saying I don't like, don't do that no more. Yes. Alexa said, you are setting the people free. Somebody say, I'm not bothered. Somebody say, you just can't play with me. Say, I'm not bothered. You just can't own me. Somebody say, I'm not bothered. You just can't treat me like you treat all the other women. Somebody say, I'm not bothered. You just can't sell me any lie. And I'm like, I'm not bothered. You just can't put me under your thumb. I'm not bothered. You just can't take me on a date and not call me for three days. I'm not bothered. You just can't have me and five other women. I'm not bothered. You just can't send me nasty emails and think that I'm not going to go to HR. I'm not bothered. <laughs> and, and I want us to get away from that narrative that every time we, every time we express ourselves, you're too aggressive. You're too this. You're too that. Blame game. Blame blame. But then they got a coworker on the other aisle. She acting a fool. And they'll never say she bothered. They just say, oh, she has children. She has three kids. She's going through something. Oh, leave her alone. She's going through a divorce. Well, how come I don't get any excuses? 
How come they don't give you any excuses? Somebody say, I want some excuses. Oh, don't worry about her. You be like, she showed up to work late three times. Oh yeah, but she got she got children, you don't. Just cause I ain't got no kids means she can show up late three days in a row and I can't. Right, am I preaching? They let your older sister, your older sister get away with it a lot. Your older sister done, you know, dated 12 men in five minutes. And you date one man and they're like, I can't believe you're dating him. He's no good. Well, my sister just dated Tyrone, Pookie, JoJo, and, and Nick all in one week. And y'all ain't say nothing to her. <laughs> Chrissy said double standards. So why why is it when, when me, the one who carried the truth, say something, it's a problem. But when the one who carried the lies say something, y'all just say she's sleepy or hungry. No, oh, she just needs, she's just having a bad day. So she's afforded a, a bad day. <laughs> she's afforded a bad day. But every time we speak, cop is, oh, you tripping. We killing that. We killing that. Every time I express myself, every time you express yourself, it is not going to, listen, God sent me to tell y'all, that's the blame game. The blaming you who kiss it, kiss it, and do it, and it is sururi and bori and doki and da 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 da. The name calling stops now. The name calling stops now in the name of Jesus. The pointing of fingers and the blame games on the children, on the remnant, stops now. People will see their hearts. In the name of Jesus, they will not, Jezebel will not, dirt and smog will not be thrown on them ever again in the name of Jesus. We are free to go, free to live out our truth, free to live in who we are and our callings, free to be accepted in the rooms God has called us to free to be happy in marriages, free for our spouses to be able to see us for who we truly are at our workplaces, in our careers, that people will handle us properly. Take the coats, take the smog, take the stains, Father God, away. I declare and I declare that a respect will be released to your people. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody say, before I move on, can somebody put a hashtag respect? Hashtag respect. Hashtag respect. You deserve it. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to be in 2 Kings today. I'm going to be in 2 Kings today. And I don't know what made God give me this word. I don't know. I just know he gave it to me. And um, today was a day of closure for me for a lot of things. God closed some things up. He stopped some things. He removed some things. I parted with some things this morning. So I, I was able to post the word today a little later than I usually do. I try to post my words before 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I try to post my words because I want my I want you guys to get the words in the morning. If you're in the flow here, if you're subscribed, if you're part of Prophetic Diary, if you like the video. Um, but if you're part of this family, I'd like for you to get the word by 11 a.m. Um, every morning, right? That's still considered morning. After 11 a.m., we're headed towards the afternoon. So God always had me to put it out in the morning. This morning, I was a little late because God had me closing some doors and things like that. So, I, um, but I was happy to still put it out for you guys. But it was talking about Jezebel. When you get a chance, go listen to it. But we're going to talk about her right now. And I don't know, you know, the story of Jezebel that keeps coming to my mind is when Jezebel... Um, threaten Elijah. And I don't know if Elijah was having a bad day, you know, because he had done so many great things 
and 1 Kings 19. I'll read it to you so that you guys don't have to go there. Um, but it says, Elijah flees. I'm going to read this and then we'll move on. It says, Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. After Jezebel sent out the threat and she said, she sent the message saying to Elijah, may the gods deal with you. Be it ever so severely, if by the time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. And Jezebel served a small G God. So I don't understand, you know, and as a prophet, as a leader, as, you know, you guys, a family here, you know, sometimes you do get a little scared, right? You might have a health scare. You might have, get some bad news or some trauma, trauma response, and you just, so I don't know, because he had just did so many things. Elijah just got really afraid. And he ran. Um, and he left his servant there while he himself went on a day's journey into the desert. Somebody say a very, very, very dry place. And he goes off into this desert and he came to a broom tree, sat there under it and prayed. And he and pray that he might die. And he asked God, he said, God, I'm so frustrated. Just take my life. I don't want to be here. He was so afraid. And he said, I had enough, Lord. Somebody, somebody, you have just said, Lord, I had enough. And even if you're not saying today, you've had enough. God is saying he's, he's had enough of Jezebel. He said, and I had enough, Lord. He said, take my life. This is first Kings 19. He said, take my life. I am not better than my ancestors. Then he laid down under the tree and fell asleep. Somebody say, the brother might just been tired. But it comes a point when you start looking at things and you just like, and even if you don't, um, God does. And I, like I said, God just told me to share this word with you guys. It wasn't nothing that I, you know, uh, came up with. He just, you know, led me to it and here we are. But I can say honestly that Satan has really played his hand so many times. And... um And when we're talking about Jezebel, um, we talk about Jezebel, we got to talk about people under the influence of her. And we talked about this before. But you got to know that she's not solely assigned to a woman. She could be used to a man. It's a spirit. And mainly, 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 mainly what she wants is ungodly control and manipulation, mainly. Ungodly. She wants ungodly control and manipulation. And it usually comes from people. It usually comes from people who are scared of rejection. So they're so afraid of rejection that they have to manipulate. Because they don't want to be hurt. They don't want to be embarrassed. They don't want to be shamed. So your boss or somebody at your job or your spouse or your ex-spouse or your family member or your mother or your aunt or your father or your cousin they're so afraid of being embarrassed. They're so afraid of people seeing their insecurities. They're so afraid of being exposed that they become very manipulative and it's very easy for the spirit to use them. Very manipulative and they want ungodly control because if they can control you, they can control the narrative. If they can control you, they can control your reactions and they can manipulate your reactions all so that they will not be embarrassed or just know that things go their way. 
Jezebel spirits, they like to impress people. You can always tell when somebody's being under a Jezebel spirit. You ever have that friend? She loves to impress people. She'll have parties to impress people. She'll do things just to impress people. You might have a Jezebel on your hand. They isolate you. They like to get you all to themselves. You don't need friends. You don't need that friends. You don't do this. They try to isolate you. They try to put you against other people and other people against you. Am I preaching today? They play victim. They're never wrong. They never take accountability. They'll, they'll use their compassion towards you to block, to block discernment. If they see you becoming too discernment, they'll, they'll do something like, oh, oh yeah, by the way, here, I brought you some flowers. They're trying to block your discernment when that man know you about to leave him. That man know you about to break up with him. And he like, oh, 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 here, babe, I, here, um, I got you a ring. Because he's trying to block your discernment. You know, he see you, you know, y'all somewhere hanging out and you he flirting with another girl and your discernment kick in like, what's going on here? And he tried to block your discernment. Hey, babe, you want to dance? And you like, was you just flirting with that girl? Oh, no, 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 no. They're never wrong. They try to isolate you. They use their compassion, their love toward you to block things. They act like you owe them something. False humility. They act like they love the world. Oh, I fed 5,000 people last week. Yeah, I'm going to feed false humility. They act like they're humble. Oh, no, take all you want here. Take some more food. False humility. Somebody say fake. You need somebody to be like, no, shoot. I got four oranges. You take two, I got two. <laughs> you know, oh, no. Whatever you want because they have an agenda to control you. So they're gonna use, I'm preaching today. Crystal, they trying to act like I am preaching. Iris, they trying to act like they fake. They phony. They ain't gonna tell you the truth because they don't wanna lose you because they fear rejection and they don't wanna lose you. So they ain't never gonna tell you the truth because they don't wanna lose you. You know, some people get a life coach that sit up there and agree with them on everything. I'm not gonna agree with you on everything. I'll agree to disagree, but something, we ain't gonna agree on everything. Because I'm not trying to keep you so that you come back. I'm trying to help you. Whether you come back or not, you're going to get the truth. False humility. They look for hurt and wounded people. They look for a woman that got children. or They look for wounded people. They love you when you're wounded. They love wounded people. They operate out of insecurity. They're so insecure. They, I'm preaching a day. Oh, Lord, I'm preaching today. Is this good, God? Is it pleasing you? Yes. If you find yourself becoming fearful like Elijah, you may be around a Jezebel. If you start to isolate yourself more with this person being in your life, it might be a Jezebel. You tire for no reason. It says that he just fell asleep. Oh, God, I'm preaching today. It says that Elijah just went to sleep. That's that exhaustion you feel. Jamia, am I preaching? Where my day ones at? Victoria Rodriguez, Adriana Hunter, Shanice, am I preaching? Okay, let me know. You know that exhaustion? Yeah, that's what that's what our brother felt. That's what he felt. He was exhausted. He was exhausted. You having perverse sexual dreams. You know, when you're around a Jezebel, you're having dreams about sexual things and perverse things. And you like, why am I thinking so nasty? I'm not even like that. Mm. That man might be a Jezebel. If every time you get around him, you're like, oh, look at his muscles. Look at the muscles right there. Every time you get around him, you be like, girl. Right, and we are human. We have thoughts and things like, girl, he fine. Ain't nothing wrong with seeing fine, man. Say he fine. You ain't blind. But if you know there's some perversion entering in your life,
you getting sick. I remember <clears throat> I was around the Jezebel and I kept on getting sick. And I'm not a sickly person at all. But I just kept getting sick. This was wrong with me. That was wrong with me. That, I'm like, who up in my life? Somebody ain't right. When you find yourself getting sick, there is a Jezebel. There's prolonged, there's something hindering you. I'm talking. Elijah was sick to his stomach. He was sick. He was tired. He was fearful. Like, why am I feeling like this? Why am I feeling like this? This isn't normal. Somebody say, this isn't normal. Somebody say it's not normal. I dealt with a, a Jezebel today. Um, and uh, her energy, when I just talking to her, I was like, I mean, she wasn't even saying nothing back. I just was reading through everything she was saying. And I was like, not to her face, but I was like, her spirit, something ain't right with this lady. This lady a vampire. She... This lady's sneaky. I could just feel it. Because things start happening in your life. You frustrated for no reason. You aggravated for no reason. You just like. Right, Chrissy said it ain't normal. It's Jezebel. And when you are entertaining her or in agreement with it, you will feel as equally sinful as her or you will engage in her sin and you will believe her lies. It says, all at once the angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was a cake and some bread. He ate and drank and laid down again. This man was tired. Somebody say, hey, this son ain't right. This son ain't right. You go around them, your blood pressure up, your hyper, you got hypertension. Then the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, get up and eat for the journey is too much for you. God never entertained her. God never entertained. Oh, Jezebel, did he say, look, you, you are a prophet. She is under you. We not even about to talk about her. I'm preaching to somebody already. It's a counterfeit dating your man. It's a counterfeit. Even if you broke up with him and God said y'all not going to be together, but she's still taunting you. Somebody in your life taunting you. Maybe it's your mother under a Jezebelic influence. Um, you know, influ being influenced by Jezebel. Maybe it's something around you or a boss or in the courtroom. Maybe it's a judge. Maybe it's somebody. God like, look, yeah, listen, your journey is too long. Get up and eat. Strength, be strengthened by this food. And he traveled 40 days and 40 nights. And he went to a mountain. There he went in a cave and spent the night. He's on his journey. Somebody say, God, surely, but surely, slowly but surely picking him back up. And a lot of us went through a healing season, January, February, March. And we seen God slowly picking us back up. And then the Lord appears to Elijah. And he says, go out and stand out on, um, go out there and stand um, on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. For the Lord is about to pass you by. So that's that. In 2 Kings 9, 3. Am I preaching to somebody already? Luke, just go, brother Luke. 
just go somewhere else. Ain't nobody need start conversations. Boy, you you, you go start a you can go start a channel and talk about whatever you want. <laughs> Second Kings 9:30. Somebody said it's about to get good. Somebody say it's about to get. Somebody say Jezebel, man. I love this scripture, actually. So, this is like my favorite scripture because. Not because Jezebel is, um, is taken out. It's more so because um, of the victory of Elijah's words. And Brother Jehu, Brother Jehu, I remember one time um, I had a friend call me in the middle of the night. And she's like, Tiny, I just keep hearing Jehu, 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 spirit of Jehu. And I was like, Jehu? I was like, that's who took Elijah. I mean, that's who, you know, took Jezebel out. And she said, yeah, you got to call on the spirit of Jehu. You got to you gotta call that thing out. There's some, some Jezebels around you, da, 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 da. And I took her instructions and I started praying. And I was like, call on the spirit of Jehu, Father God. Release me from these Jezebel attacks, X, Y, Z, da, 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 da. And that's how I learned about Jehu. I didn't think to do anything like that, but it was in that moment that I was being attacked that I knew that God was sending help. And Jehu is put on assignment. Then Jehu went to Jezreel. When Jezebel heard about it, she painted her face and arranged her hair and looked out of the window. That's why religious folks like to say, oh, she had on makeup. She painted her face. Anybody that wear makeup, they were so, religious folks were so uneducated they weren't in tune with the holy spirit when they started saying that so that's where they get that she painted her eyes that's why they talk about makeup and stuff i'm not getting into all of that arranged her hair and looked out that's why they try to say women be jezebels and stuff like that that's not why god put that in there that's not why god showed us um why that jezebel was preparing for her own death that's what she was doing when she was getting all dressed up as Jehu entered the gate, she asked, Have you came in peace, you murderer of your master? So Jezebel don't even know that her time, you know, that she talked to the one that's about to take her out. And of course, she's accusing him. He looked up at the window and called out, Who is on my side? See, Jehu had been anointed to do this. There was an anointing on him. And when you have an anointing on your life, you have a little different confidence about you. So he didn't even have to respond. Somebody say, don't even respond. Somebody say, don't even respond. Somebody say, stop responding to these people. Somebody say, don't even, don't even say nothing. And he said, who with me? Who on my side? And two of the keepers looked down at him. Throw her down, Jehu said. Jehu ain't never had to put a finger on her. They throw her down. Jehu says, so they threw her down. And some of the blood smattered on the walls and the horses. 
and trample her underfoot. So somebody say the horses, she was trampled by the horses. So she was trampled by the horses, right? And so after that, Jehu went and ate and drank. And he said, so after he see her trampled under the ground, after he see her toe up from the floor up, after he see, after he see, blood everywhere he went and got something to eat and drink and he told his boys he told his boys thank you um lucas is for that see goodbye, Je goodbye jezebel he went and he ate and drank because he knew that his work was done he knew that what he had done was it was over but he knew at one point you know she was a king's daughter so he said go bury her so sometimes in our life we can think something is dead or God removed them out of our life. So we just be like, okay. Or, you know, you and a guy break up and you're healing and you're over it. Or they fire you from the job and God give you another job. And, you know, even though you know Jezebel was attacking you, you know, you just kind of move on with your life. You're not really thinking about what people did to you. You're not thinking about what they said to you. God start elevating your life. You kind of just start moving on. You really don't be thinking about it like that. So Jehu went and ate and he drank and he like, hey, go bury her. Right? Y'all get what I'm saying? And Jehu went in and take and eat and drink. Take care of the cursed woman, he said, and bury her for she was a king's daughter. Somebody say, but. But when they went out to bury her, they found nothing except her skull. Her feet and her hands. They went back and told Jehu, who said, this is the word of the Lord. Jehu like, what? Oh my goodness, that's the word of the Lord. He was like, Elijah said that. He said, the Lord spoke to the servant Elijah on the plot of the ground of Jezreel. Dogs will devour Jezreel's flesh, Jezebel's flesh. Jezebel's body will be like a refuse of the ground in a plot of Jezreel. So no one will be able to say, nobody will be able to recognize her. So he like, wait, wait, wait. He was like, per protocol, or pro, pro to float, you know, I just got the divorce and moved on. I just was like, okay, we ain't together no more, you know? I just, we had a custody battle and you won or you told me I wasn't fit for the job and, you know, and, you know, you decided that you wasn't going to give me my portion of the money. You scammed me out of the money and took the path and ran off with a new girlfriend. And you just told me I wasn't good enough. You blame me for all your problems. And I kind of just ate that. I was just kind of happy God just got me out of the relationship. I was just happy that God blessed me with a little bit of money so that I could move on. I, I didn't expect for this family to accept me. I didn't expect for my life to blow up like this. I, I didn't expect to make it to the next level. I was the black sheep of the family. I was just happy that God got me a car. I was just happy God put $5 in my pocket so I had enough gas money to get to the other side of town. I was happy with God moving me and the children out of the situation. I, I, I was just happy to get out. I was just happy to have enough rent money for this month. I, I didn't, you know, I, I, I mean, I was going to put them on child support, but I didn't really feel like I, I, I didn't think I had to, but I, I mean, I, I was, I was okay with the, the horses just trampling over her. I was just happy with the church, the, the, the horses trampling over her. Can y'all hear me? I was okay with that. But God wasn't. God said, uh, 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 Somebody said that same prophet that she chased down. That same prophet that she chased down said that she was going to die. Somebody say, I have a prophecy over my life. Somebody say, I have, the Bible says that I, 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 uh, I, I have some rights to some things and, 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 and I am uh, going to receive some things that 
you know, my ancestors, Jacob, you know, and 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 and, and Joshua and, and David and and and, and Abraham and, and and there's some things over my life, and God said, you ain't getting away that easy. And there's some things that God has spoken over my life. And if God says she was going to get eaten up by the dogs, as bad as it seemed, if God said that he was going to turn around this court case for me, then he's going to turn it around. If God said he's going to turn over my finances and the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous, then he's going to do that. Like Elijah said, somebody said, like Elijah said, somebody said, like Elijah said, if I said she was going to get eaten up by some dogs, I didn't say she was going to get trampled over by no horses. That happened. But I said what I said about y'all not even being able to recognize her because the prophet said what he said, that same prophet that you chased down into that cave, into that desert, that same prophet that you lied on, the same prophet you accused, the same person that told you, touch not my anointed, the same person that told you you needed to change your life, the same person that told you you need to lead that man, the same person that you laughed at, the same person that you had running over in them deserts, the same person that told you that that wasn't right, the same person that told you that you needed to forgive them. The same person that told you that you need to repent. The same person that told you that was your wife. The same person that told you that was your husband. The same person that told you that she was anointed and she was going places in life. The same person that told you you need to take care of them kids. The same person that told you that, like somebody said, like Elijah said. Somebody said, like God said over my life, that you will hand me over those car keys because they belong to me. That you will hand over them house keys because they belong to me. I'm prophesying to somebody. Somebody said that car is coming to you regardless if you got bad credit. That money is coming back to you whether they want to give it up to you or not. You are blessed and highly favored. Even your enemies will bless you. God said there are some prophecies spoken over your life, spoken over my life in the name of Jesus. God says I am blessed and highly favored. God says that goodness and mercy should follow me all the days of my life. God says he will work it all together for my good. God says that the story, just like Elijah said, just like the prophet said, that all goes well for me. God said that it's all going to work out for me. I don't know how it's going to work out, but there are some prophecies smoking over my life and there are Nan Jezebel that's going to hold me back in the name of Jesus. And God says enough is enough to the things that's trying to stop me. Enough, enough to the fear. Enough, enough to the tiredness. Enough to, uh, is enough to the exhaustion. Enough is enough to the warfare. That's why in the prophetic diary, in the PD Society Circle, we're going to be talking about warfare. We're going to be talking about the threshing floor. And we're going to be talking about a harvest this Sunday. You don't want to miss out. Because we are in our harvest season. And we are on the threshing floor. And God is about to do some things in our life where some prophecies have been spoken over our life. Some marriage prophecies have been spoken over our life. There are some things. I had a dream last night. And I'm going to get out of here. I had a dream last night. And it was a bunch of people that had did me wrong all together. And, and I had been telling these people like, listen, year after year, this is what's going on. This is what's happening with me. This is what's going on with me. This is what's happening. And none of them would listen to me. And in the dream, they were down in this crowd, but I was on a set of stairs on the side. And um, this guy, um, a kingdom spouse, uh, the counterfeit had attacked him in front of everybody. And embarrassed him because he was manipulative. He was like a Jezebel. He was lying to her and playing this girl against that girl. And the counterfeit embarrassed him in front of everybody. And he ran off just like a Jezebel. He ran off trying to save his life. And I was standing on the stairs and I was like, wow, I didn't even have to touch that situation. They can't blame me for nothing. Thank you, Victoria, for that seed. And I was like, wow, look how that all played out. And that was God letting me know that one, they can't blame you for nothing. But two, the person that he least expected was going to embarrass him. He thought it would be you. He thought it would be this person. He thought it would be that person that he hurt, that person that he hurt, all these people that he hurt. But it was the one that he had his trust in. It was the one that he least expected. And she had on, a, she had on my dress. The counterfeit had on my dress representing that she was standing in the authority. She was standing in the authority. Thank you, Bethany. Bethany. She was standing in the authority that I had. And she said enough is enough. Because she asked him what he did to that one, what he did to this one, that he did this one, and did that one. And she stood up. The one that he least expected stood up to him. 
the one that he least expected stood up to him. The one that he did not think, and she embarrassed him in front of everybody. He ran off, even though I was the one telling them about this man, telling them about the things that he done, and no one would listen to me. But the one that they least expect, and the God is saying in this hour, it's going to be the people that they least expect. It's going to be the people that you least expect blessing you. It's going to be the people that you least expect saying, I'm sorry. It's going to be the people you least expect bringing you flowers. If suddenly that man is going to come home. Suddenly they're going to come to a census. Suddenly, because he ran off somewhere. Probably ran off to repent to God. Ain't no telling. But they're going to run, but they can't hide like my, old, my last word said. But God is sending me here to let you know that it stops here. That enough is enough. Enough. You're tired from the battle, Elijah. You're tired from what you've been through. But there's a prophetic word spoken over Jezebel. There's a prophetic word spoken over your enemies. And it ends now in the name of the Lord. I decree and I declare that it comes to an end now in the name of the There's authority on the 12th. There's an authority. 12 represent order. Today is the 12th. There's a divine order on this day. Somebody's here, divine order. Y'all better sleep and y'all better get some good rest because the journey that the Lord is going to take you on is going to be a good one, but it will be long. So you better rest up. You better prepare for that marriage. You better prepare for goodness. You better prepare to bring in that harvest because it's going to be a lot. So I was simply here sent to tell you guys to let you know that enough is enough. That every prophecy that the Lord spoke over your life or spoke into your life is going to come to pass. I came to let you know that Jezebel can surround that kingdom marriage, but she will fall and she will fail. And they won't be able to say anything to you about it in the name of Jesus. That Jezebel can surround herself and come around your marriage and come around your job and come around lying about you. But there's a prophecy over Jezebel's life that would come to pass. Call on the spirit of Jehu. We call on the spirit of Jehu now, Father God, to kill and wipe out any, Father God, spirits around us, to wipe out, out any Jezebel again, um, presences around us, any Athaliah spirits from her bloodline. We cancel them in the name of Jesus, Father God, for we are covered. Somebody say, I feel a breakthrough. Somebody say, I can feel God showing up for me. Somebody say, I can feel it. Somebody say, I can know. I can tell that God is showing up. God says, enough is enough. And you are about to see divine turnaround. And you are about to see change. And you are about to see breakthrough. Where Jezebel was standing in the doorway, she has to go. She can't monitor you. She can't watch you. She can't control you. She can't manipulate you no more. She can't manipulate Camera. She can't really manipulate things no more. She cannot manipulate the situation. The devil is a lie. If you feel led to show into this word, hashtag Jezebel is dead. Hashtag enough is enough. In Jesus' name, I love you, family. I'll talk to you soon. PD Society Circle this Sunday talking about the threshing floor. Let's go higher in Christ. Sign up for that one-on-one -on -one encouragement call. Grab your cute little hoodie or active wear set. Keywindassist.com. I love you, family. Jezebel is dead. Somebody say enough is enough. Enough is enough. Talk to you guys soon.